below. Welcome to part two of our videos on the edit pane in Studio One. This one is going to be focused on editing MIDI. Our last video was on editing audio and I showed you some, basically demonstrated some of the sampling I did in my earlier video about the instrument and effects panels um, and the song I used in that. So we're gonna continue using that as an example here and I'm going to instead have us look at MIDI. Now first, something to know is that MIDI is essentially computer data that tells virtual instruments what notes to play for how long and also has some other information like something called velocity which is if you imagine pressing a note on a keyboard how fast you press that note that's the velocity of the note and depending on the the sound that you're using some are velocity sen sensitive and they will respond to that velocity differently so it's just something to, to keep in mind. But I'll show you how all of that looks once we get into the actual edit pane. So we're gonna go ahead and go down here and click edit. It's gonna show me the track that I currently have selected. I'm currently looking at the, the lead sound, this little pluck. I'm gonna go ahead and just return to the beginning here. This sound, right? Now, to again demonstrate that these notes are not connected per se to the instrument I'm actually going to put a different sound on here um, so let me go over to the instruments panel just grab vital onto here and then great so I'll just assign it to vital 3 and then I will pick oh let's just do the initial preset it's not a very nice sound but it's not supposed to be Right? Totally different instrument, totally different instance of the instrument. It's just reading the computer information to turn that into music. So that's all that's going on there. So I'm going to put it back on the, the instrument that sounds a little bit nicer. And we're going to take a look at this. So you will see a lot of the cursor based controls are still true here. There are a couple that are different, like the step record function as well as these two right here that are different. So this is your piano view, as well as the drum view. So depending on the instrument that you're using, if you're using drums, often those are a sampled instrument or a very short sound. So the things like note length don't matter when you're programming drums. For example, let's, let's take a look at the drum beat that I wrote here, this is what it would look like. And this is what drum view looks like. So you'll see here over on the left hand side, it has a list of all the different names of the, the drum samples. And you'll see that they're t uh, tied to a note. So this one's C1, C sharp one, D1, D sharp one, things like that. Some people do program drums by, by playing it into a piano. Other, way, other times you could just basically type them in, essentially. Um, and how you would do that is, so say I wanted to, to continue this drum beat further down, um, is I would just go ahead and click this paint tool. And I'm gonna give myself a little more space. Great. And then just, Put down my beats. So this is the click. So I want to do the kicks first. So I'm going to do those on beats one and beat three. I'm going to do snare on beats. I'm making sure I'm making sure that I'm lined up here with snare rip on D1. And you can just move these if they don't end up on the right thing. So it's not the end of the world. I was trying to line them up the first time. Do those on two and four. And then it was the hi-hat on the off beats. So it's just that easy, I just type them in. Right, you can just, just. There you go. All those notes I just typed in, they're there now. Um, same as with audio, you can duplicate these. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the arrow tool here. 
I'm just going to select those. I'm going to hit D and it will just move it to the next quantized beat essentially. Um, and it's a great way for if you're just copy pasting something like a drum loop or, or you're programming something like that, you just want an extra version of it or say you want to keep the instrumentals the same and you're doing multiple verses in a row. Um, it's a good way to just kind of fill those out real quick and then maybe you'll add some variation later. It saves you some time. I always recommend keeping that in mind. Good old copy paste, always a good time. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this lead. Make my edit pane a little bigger. Great. So you'll see that these notes have a length and they have a note that they're on, obviously, um, which this one's A1. And over here on the left, what I'm looking at right now is called the piano roll. So it's basically, imagine you had a piano to the left of all of this. That's how these notes are notated in the edit screen. So what you would do, say you wanted to make this note instead of, I don't want it to be an A, I want it to be a B. You just drag it up, right? Drag that back down to an A, because that's, that's where I want it. Um, and if you want to write some extra notes in here, so say I wanted, I want to play a D here as well, right? So, so that's that's how you can type those things in. Now, remember what I said earlier about velocity, right? It's basically how fast you press the note. Um, certain synthesizers and sampled instruments will care about velocity. I will actually just take a look at, so I'll look here in vital and it says velocity track is not active because I can see it's at the zero position, right? So it doesn't matter too much for this virtual instrument, but if you look over here, right? So if I select this note, you'll see some extra information about the note here and that velocity there, it's 38. Which is a pretty weird number. I didn't type that in as that. Um, I actually recorded this in with the MIDI piano. So I played this on the piano into the computer as, as it was recording. And that's one way to do it. And you can type them all in. It will just always put it at a velocity of 80. So it's something you want to keep in mind as you're working with MIDI is that it can start to sound a bit robotic or unfeeling or un... Um, it lacks that human touch that you might desire. Uh, and the couple different ways to do that is either play it in or mess with the velocities. That will often give you the human touch or just offset the rhythms a little bit. That's another way to do it. Which, speaking of rhythms, you can always drag these note values to however long you want them to be, right? Or you can move them here or here, you know. You can just drag them where they need to be. And that's the basics of, of editing and working with MIDI. Um, there's a lot of different techniques out there and a lot of different ways to do it. If you have any questions, please refer to the live guide. Or if you want to mess around with it and have more detailed questions, just come down to the recording studio. One of us will be more than happy to help you out. Thank you so much. Have a good day.